came the dawn. All right, we talked a little bit about the micro collection in the previous video, just sort of setting up what it was and uh, the fact that I got them for Christmas here in this house in Mississippi, and I haven't taken mine out of storage in a decade and a half. So this is my first time gathering everything together and then transporting it across a state line, which ought to be illegal. Uh, but here in this giant Rubbermaid tub are the play sets and vehicles. So let's uh, dig into these. I know at a glance what this one is. Hey, it's in an old Toys R Us bag. There's a piece of history for you. Um, but this would be part of the Hoth World playset. Now, some of these I got as uh, the worlds, and some of them I got individually, which was pretty much the same thing, but broken down into smaller segments. So, oh, uh, looks like uh, this handle back here has drooped over time. I may can hit that with a um, hair dryer and uh, see if it turns out a little bit better. But always love this ion cannon playset um, because the handle allowed you to elevate and all of that. And then there's a, a little pass through here uh, and the, the gates would open. The shield doors must be closed. Uh, and then there's uh, a little piece here that when you hit this button, it would blow off the wall and I guess allow the Imperials in there. And there were little, um, I forget the term for them, but they did a, a very nice touch here of having little um, slits for the soldiers to fire out of and, and shoot the bad guys. Oh, wow. In the previous video, we talked about the foam for the Death Star, and here it is, and it actually looks kind of okay. I'm surprised. Uh, so if anybody out there is wanting to make replicas of the Micro Collection foam, mine might be uh, usable as a template. So, all right. Toys R Us bag does not appear to have anything else in it. So I'll put that to the side. And then here are more of the Hoth pieces, including the wall for this playset. So now it looks complete, but then, haha, -ha, the bad guys have broken in. Now, I want you to see uh, this and this and this. So there was a certain modularity built into these playsets so that you could combine them however you saw fit. And got some turrets here and got some, got a scout walker as well. So, and those go on a different base. So we'll get to it in a second. Oh, and also the shield generators. Target, maximum firepower. On the Death Star and the Bespin sets, the possibility of, uh, Modularity was a little easier, I guess, but when you got to Hoth, then it became a little more difficult to hide the connecting pieces among the sculpted organic shape of the snow. So there we go, a little ATST, and he's designed to blow apart, uh, which I always kind of felt like was a detraction. So. Uh, he, he lays down a particular part of the base and you hit a thing and he blows up, uh, which I felt, um, playability would have been better if they didn't build that in, you know, that's just me, but Hey, they were experimenting. They were trying new things. Oh, these are some of the computer bases for hot. So I'll get those out. Now this was really neat. You actually had an interior environment, uh, and an exterior environment in one playset. So that was pretty cool. There's the other one. You know, uh, I applied those stickers pretty well for 10 years old, I'd have to say. I was doing uh, a Lego Ecto-1 a little while ago, and I guess my eyesight and my hands, you know, just not as good as they were when I was 10, that's for sure. All right, so that's for Bespin. That's for Bespin. A lot of these pieces go to a different world. And I don't mean the spin-off from the Cosby Show. All right, these are the guns for the X-Wing fighter. This foam actually feels like it's in decent condition. I wonder how many more years it'll last now that I've re-exposed it to air. That might have been a mistake. 
All right, I've got at least two of this one Vespin set because I'm seeing multiples of this glass that Luke falls through. I can't remember if it's the gantry or control room. I always wanted to call the control room the gantry. All right, so everything else left in here is the orange foam for the micro collection Death Star. And as shown in the previous video, I have a chart that I drew showing exactly how to recombine those pieces so they form one solid sheet. I don't think I had the foresight to draw that the first day that I had it, so I must have put it back together like a jigsaw puzzle one day and then made myself a diagram in case I ever wanted to do that again. Maybe I did need a hobby. So, that is everything from that bag. Here's a small bag, which is the rest of the X-Wing fighter. Now, one thing I did notice over time was that the stickers on the micro collection stuff really wanted to peel up. Worse than the stickers on the regular Star Wars toys for whatever reason. And why was the droid socket not practical? Probably, I, if I take a second to think about it, I guess because the R2 had a base under his feet. So he couldn't just sock it in. He would have had, the, the hole for him would have had to be as wide as his base. So I guess in hindsight, yeah. Uh, I do see why they did a dedicated uh, plastic R2 on top of this X-Wing fighter here. And please don't be brittle and break or anything. So uh, landing gear for the front. Little X-Wing. And... Then it's got the, the cannons that go in the back here on the S-foils. So first time these cannons have been put on this ship in 10, 15 years at least. There we go. Ah. And the S-foils, just uh, you just kind of clicked them into place like you did on the old die-cast toy. Uh, they didn't have a mechanism to open them, like pushing R2 down on the full-size one. But it does have this mechanism, which looks like a fifth thruster back here in the back, and that was to battle damage it. And it should have popped into three pieces, uh, but anyway. And then you just pop it back into place. So, and it was kind of neat that it would blow apart but stay combined like that with the flexible rod going all the way through there um, so that you didn't lose your components, I guess. Uh, but yeah, this would scale really well next to the Battlestar Galactica Vipers and Cylon Raiders and Scarab and Stellar Probe that I mentioned in uh, the last video. So, all right, X-Wing Fighter, reassembled. Cool. Let's see what else is in here. What about a TIE Fighter? Oh no, it looks to be damaged, but again, that's intentional. You push this button on the back where the battery uh, compartment was on the full size TIE, I've got him upside down. Uh, you push this button and the wings would go limp, but they wouldn't break all the way off. So all you gotta do is Hit it and hit it again. Uh, and this one's hinged to even further uh, be damaged. So yeah, are they both hinged? Nope, just that one. And again, you can see the stickers peeling up as they have been since 1980, whatever, whatever year I got it. Um, some of these were exclusive to one chain or another. I think there were some that were exclusive to JC Penney's, which might include the Falcon. Because I didn't get the Falcon as a kid. I didn't get him for several years. I think it was 1993 that I finally got the Millennium Falcon to go with the Micro Collection collection. So that was redundant, but I don't care. All right, so Iconic. And I like that they were in the Battle Damaged X-Wing and Empire Strikes Back Battle Damaged TIE Fighter color scheme. White ones would have been pretty cool too, uh, but they were at least trying to unify the choices made in one scale to the items done for the second scale. Now, this is something I bought later in life, which is a second TIE Fighter, and it's got some battle damage stickers applied to it. If I recall correctly, I had a spare set of stickers, bought this with no stickers on one wing. So I was like, well, I can use the battle damage stickers on it, and that way I'll have two. And what I did was, instead of putting battle damage on both wings, some of these look like they've been peeled up and then reapplied, probably with double face tape under them. So I think what I did was 
do it so that if I needed to shoot a scene where there were two good TIE fighters, I could fake it. And if I needed to do a scene where there was a battle damage TIE fighter, I had the other side as an option. Which is sort of, I mean, they do that in movie making. Uh, there are props where a model spaceship will have one deco on one side and one deco on the other so that it can be filmed from two different angles and represent two different ships. Uh, I've heard of that being done. What are you? Oh, wow. Oh, he hasn't survived the, the eons. But apparently, I decided that the little micro-collection Death Star needed a micro-collection Dianoga. So I sculpted this guy from, I'm going to say Play-Doh, something, something that would harden anyway, and then painted him. And it looks like the paint is flaking off and he's breaking down. So he's just going to stay right there in that Ziploc bag. I've already got most of this playset out, so we're going to put it together. And this is the one for the shield generators, which I always wished there were four instead of three, but oh well. It was cool that they did it at any scale. And again, you've got a little trigger here to make them blow up. Um, what the heck? Here we go. So, wow. The, the noise of that just like took me back. And then over here is the spot where you would lay the at at or the ATST down and put him on the snowbank in such a position that he would blow up too. So his legs had to already be in a position that would pop off. The body lays on the button. And then this head, which wants to fall apart badly enough on its own, uh, would just be loosely pinned on there. So you had a fallen scout walker, and the good guys could blow that up as well. All right, where'd you go? I heard a piece hit the floor. It's right by the leg of my chair, and it is the leg of the ATST. And again, this uh, shows you what I mentioned previously about the modularity because you could put those two interlocked together, or you could do it here, or here. What are you? You are part of Despin. I believe you are the gantry. Old Walmart bag with a rollback. Walmart, another rollback to save you more. Shop walmart.com. Okay. Seen a bag like this lately? No, you haven't. And that's because it's been in this box for that many years. And again, you could put these two together, or you could put these two together, or you could put the turret next to the ion cannon, you could put the uh, shield generator uh, between them, or on the outside, or you just, you had options playing as a kid. I'm gonna put this Death Star over here, right there. Here is the rest of the Death Star, including the now empty trash compactor. A lot of these uh, showed up in my uh, movie, Whoever Dies With Most Toys Wins, which I'm still contemplating posting on YouTube at some point. I just haven't, uh, it's got a lot of glitches to it. Glitches from when it was shot and also glitches from when it was converted. Uh, so glitches I knew about are one thing, but glitches that have accrued over time, uh, it's like I see the beginning of this shot and the end of the shot, but there's black in the middle, and I don't know how to edit around that. Anyway, it's just something I've got to work on. Possibly have to go back to a VHS copy and reconvert and hope for the best. All right, so this one should be the Bespin control room. I'm running out of room on this table. I think the table in the 80s was a different table that was round uh, or uh, actually oval. And this little bitty square thing that is in here now is not doing the job, let me tell you. Here's the final piece of Hoth. I'm surprised I don't have multiples of Hoth, though, because you could have a whole cool trench if you had multiples of the turrets and multiples of the... Uh, I wish I wish I'd thought of that back when they were cheaper. All right, so I've got uh, the little Wampa Cave, and it has a little space here for the Probot to go on. So the Probot doesn't go with the turrets like it did in the three and three quarter inch line, it goes with the Wampa Cave, which is kind of cool. It's got little spaces here to clip Luke's legs into the snow so that he hangs upside down. I think this is number four of the Bespin Controller. Now, they don't all have 
the windows. I only have windows enough for two of them. Clearly, I bought those second hand. This is the elevator to the Death Star. So that should be the final component for it. This is the Bespin carbon freeze chamber. The centerpiece of that world in another Toys R Us bag. All right. So what you would do is attach the other play sets um, at these different points. And what I liked was the idea of doing multiples in multiple directions so that you could really take advantage of the modularity like that. And it had a neat little mechanism here where Han could escape. You know, you would put uh, Han up here, clip him in right there, and you would have the Carbonite Han preset. And so you would lower him down, put this thing down, spin that 180, and then use this to bring up the carbon block. But they had a, a sliding door back here so Han Solo could escape. Apparently the Rebels pulled a switcheroo and had a pre-made carbonite block even though they had no idea that Darth Vader was going to freeze Han anyway. So, uh, but you know, neat little options there that they had for stuff. And then you could attach half of the gantry and you could put the other half of the gantry. The gantry could be a standalone playset or you could break it in two and insert the control room halfway through it. So, and then for the door to nowhere there, they had uh, a staircase that leads nowhere. But anyway, you know, so they were trying. And then this piece had a, a gangplank that could either be down so that characters get up to this level or could go up so they could go up to this level. So, you know, they had some neat playability. And there's a door that goes in this door frame. And there's a couple of pieces that go on the edge of the gantry out there. So that's, that would be like the main way to put all the pieces together. But you still had the option around here of a different attachment point. So, again, you know, they make them modular, so why not? I want to see if control rooms can nestle. Hey, they can. Cool. So you could have like a whole row of control rooms going out there. All right. So that's the only one that I bought multiples of, though. I didn't buy multiple. Well, the TIE Fighter. Huh. That's weird. I would have told you that I had multiples of several of the uh, components for this. I personally am really enjoying this, uh, especially seeing the little custom figures here and like the custom of the uh, back the chamber which I never had before. So this will be the first time that the back to chamber has ever gone inside of the Echo Base. All right. So I guess I'll have to do a part three, maybe a part four. Just depends on how verbose I get. Thanks for watching.